Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. One thing I would like to ask, if you do have your cell phone, please put it on mute or turn it down. I would greatly appreciate it. Just want to thank everybody in the room for being here. All of our boosters, administration, uh, media is here today. Thanks to ESPN Jamestown for broadcasting this and all of our fans and boosters watching across the world on JimmyAthletics.com. So we're excited to be here today. I'm Sean Johnson, I'm Director of Athletics here at the University of Jamestown. And I just want to talk a little bit about the process of how we got to this day today. It was an awful lot of hard work by a lot of people. A lot of those people are in the room here, our administration, our coaches, our student athletes. Again, talking about the process a little bit, I got a phone call where Dr. Vidal and I met about this possibility and he asked me to reach out to the GPAC and not knowing what their thoughts about the University of Jamestown were at the time. So I called the, the commissioner and he said, ironically, well, we were just talking about you guys. So the process kicked off from there. We've done very thorough analysis um, of every possible aspect of this decision. We've engaged, I think, just about every group possible. We've sent letters to all of our alumni. We have uh, addressed all of our student athletes. We've engaged with the Student Athlete Advisory Committee met with the Alumni Booster Board, and certainly a lot of work and a lot of thanks goes out to our Board of Trustees, who was heavily involved in this decision and thoroughly vetted through them as well. And a, a big thanks to the Commissioner of the Great Plains Athletic Conference, Mr. Corey Westera, and especially to the Athletic Directors and Presidents of the GPAC. Certainly, you know, we had a decision to make, but so did they. And there was a visitation group that came up during the summer that was on campus that visited with our administration and our student athletes and our coaches and our staff. It went very well, so we had some face-to-face -face contact. And then about a month ago, I was able to go to Sioux City, Iowa and meet with the athletic directors face-to-face. -face. There's been a lot of work on the logistics of this, especially on scheduling. Our coaches have been heavily involved in that. We've also looked very hard at how we handle the budget, how we handle recruiting, all those things that are affected by making a decision like this. And again, we've done very thorough analysis and, and certainly listened to everybody's thoughts about, uh, about what this decision would mean for our athletic department. So, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce the Commissioner of the Great Plains Athletic Conference, Mr. Corey Westman. Sean, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Sean mentioned, my name is Corey Westra. Um, with the Great Plains Athletic Conference, I've been the commissioner for 14 years, uh, starting back in 2003. Uh, it is my great pleasure to be here on a gorgeous fall afternoon um, for a, a tremendous time in the history of the University of Jamestown, as well as the Great Plains Athletic Conference. So I'm going to kick it off with the official announcement uh, after a vote of the Great Plains Athletic Conference Council of Presidents at their Monday meeting in Seward, Nebraska at Concordia University. The presidents did vote to extend officially an invitation, Bob, to the University of Jamestown to join the GPAC for 2018 and 19. So congratulations. Sean spoke about process. Uh, process has certainly been a word uh, that's been uh, top of my mind uh, for the last uh, really six months um, uh, as I've gotten to know Sean very well. Uh, and I also want to just mention that, you know, being around the GPAC for 14 years, there's a lot of familiar faces in the room. And, you know, for me personally, this is a lot of fun. You know, Tom, I'm looking at you. We've, we've had a great history together. Uh, Greg, through the national tournament um, in Sioux City, uh, just a lot of familiarity in the room. So this is not all new, uh, at least for me, and I think for a lot of our schools. It will be new, certainly, for some of our schools, and they are very excited about that prospect. So. Um, I just again want to talk about our process a little bit, as, as was mentioned by Sean. Um, when our presidents met in the spring, there was an incredible interest in moving forward on this. Um, but before you go into any process like that, you, you want to have a sense of what the other end looks like. And I think that was important to the two gentlemen up here and to your university as it was to us. And I think that really guided the process as we went through it. So we, we did jump uh, after the interest level was there, and you know, like he said, we were talking about talking about this just as they were talking about it. Uh, then we jumped headfirst into the scheduling process because at the end of the day, in a conference, it's about scheduling, um, and, and it's been a busy process. So we continue to work through uh, small parts of that process, but we feel very comfortable about where that is going. 
we did come here in June. It was a great day. Um, President Amy Novak at Dakota Wesleyan uh, led our committee. She is our Council of Presidents representative to the NAIA, phenomenal uh, leader uh, in our conference and at Dakota Wesleyan, uh, you know, just down the road in Mitchell, South Dakota, and uh, just walked away feeling very good about the day, along with our um, Athletic Director Representative Steve Gast from Briarcliff University who chairs our ADs, he came on the trip. We also had uh, Alan Ferris here, a faculty athletic representative from Mount Marty College, and Mary Alexander, a financial aid representative from uh, Dakota Wesleyan. So that group and myself uh, were the ones that went through uh, the formalities, if you will. A lot of questions actually were in this very room, answered a lot of questions next door, toured the campus. And let me just say, the campus is beautiful. And it's neat to see where you, your, your proud history, but the future. Um, uh, the new arena certainly is the, the highlight of that, but to, just to see the pride and facilities, and you know, sometimes hard to let the old facilities go, but know that the new facilities are coming, and that's all about, uh, I think you talk about journey uh, here at Jamestown, that's certainly your journey uh, here, and that, that, that's a big part of what you, we, you want to do as you move forward now into the Great Plains Athletic Conference. That was important to our presidents to see that as well. Uh, all of our college campuses in the GPAC and universally in intercollegiate small college athletics, that's what you have to do. Uh, you have to stay ahead within the financial constraints that you're, you're dealt and uh, with the, uh, the monies that are available, and you're doing a phenomenal job. So my uh, hats off to both of you and, and your staff for what you're doing here at Jamestown. So uh, we, we go to our president's meeting. Uh, the official vote takes place last Monday, and we are here today. So what are you joining? Uh, what are you joining? Great Plains Athletic Conference is in year 17. Um, the roots go back to 1969. Uh, the Great Plains Athletic Conference was founded out of the Nebraska Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Uh, it is a Nebraska-based conference um, at its roots. Uh, those six members originally in 1969 uh, held together till the early 90s when Northwestern joined the group as a football school. That was one of the drivers, was a football school, uh, and that became the NIAC in a different way, instead of Nebraska Intercollegiate, Nebraska, Iowa Athletic Conference. That group stayed together as a group of seven up until the late 90s when two athletic directors at the time really spearheaded what you would know today as the Great Plains Athletic Conference. Uh, Dr. Bob Borichter, who is now the commissioner of the MIAA in Kansas City, who was the athletic director at Hastings College at the time, and uh, Mr. Todd Berry, who was the athletic director at Northwestern at the time, then had some time at Briarcliff and is now retired. Those two, at the time, said the NIAC needs to expand. It needs to grow. And the target was put out on four schools, four schools that you'll know very familiar, uh, no particular order, but Dakota Wesleyan at that time, the University of Sioux Falls, Mount Marty College, and Dork College. That group of four joined uh, into the NIAC in uh, 1999 to start in 2000, 2001, and the name was changed to the Great Plains Athletic Conference. That group of 11 held together for two years until the, the 12th school was added at the time, that was Briarcliff University in Sioux City. The very next year, Morningside College in Sioux City joined, and the league went to 13. That was 2003 and 4, and we uh, had no changes in the GPAC until 2010, when on a kind of dark summer day, Dana College ceased operations. Uh, that was a tough day for Dana, certainly, and all those people, but for the conference as well, because of the history at 125 years of an institution. The next summer, more advanced notice, certainly, because you felt it up here with Minot State, the University of Sioux Falls went to Division II. Into 2015, the, the conference added a new member. College of St. Mary out of Omaha came into the group. Uh, right on the heels of that, we did learn that Nebraska Wesleyan had an opportunity to go to full Division III membership in the Iowa Conference, so they competed through the end of last year. That left us with our group until this process began. And that was a part of the process to certainly look at the strength of a conference, because uh, in the NAIA, at its root, the conferences are where it's at. Uh, the conferences have to be strong in the NAI for the NAIA to be strong. So why Jamestown? Jamestown brings, you can say on paper, but in reality, everything that we want in a Great Plains Athletic Conference school. Top of that list, faith-based. Uh, our league is faith-based. It will remain faith-based. And University of Jamestown brings that to the GPAC. So that was number one. Number two, robust sport offerings, right in my quote, but that is so important. From day one, you will hit the ground running with robust sports offerings in the GPAC that enhance 
all of our sports. It's not just a football decision. It's not just a baseball decision. It's every sport in the GPAC. And I'm going to allude to two other sports here momentarily uh, that will actually get a jump start, if, they, if you will, into the GPAC. So those were the two driving reasons. And the third is just, again, the desire to keep moving. You have to keep moving in intercollegiate athletics. If you stand still, it's done. And our presidents know that. I think you know that. I think everybody knows that, that you have to keep looking for opportunities. And this opportunity presented itself, and we were excited to go with it. And that is why we are here today. So this is a great day. This is a great day for us. It's a great day for you. The other decisions that were made on Monday as part of the Council of Presidents meeting, besides the big decision, was we added language to our constitution and bylaws that will now allow affiliate membership in the GPAC. Our conference has never had that before. What is affiliate membership? One or two sports, sport offerings coming in to help out a certain sport at certain times. Part of that was pushed by Jamestown for decision number three, but even without that, this was an important decision that our conference needed to have. We needed to have affiliate language membership, affiliate membership language in our constitution and bylaws as an option. That was approved. And then the third decision came is that next year, the very next year here, 2017-18, you will bring over wrestling and cheer and dance uh, to the GPAC as an affiliate member for that one year leading up to the full membership of 18 and 19. So those are, our, um, uh, those are the decisions that have been made this week. It's a great day to be here. So my job now is to turn it over to the president of the University of Jamestown, uh, Dr. Goodall, for some comments and officially welcome you to the Great Plains Athletic Conference. tremendous day for the University of Jamestown. I want to express my sincere appreciation to Corey for all of the work that uh, he personally invested in, in this process. And it, it's been a pleasure to work with you and with your ADs and presidents. And uh, it's an exciting moment as we become uh, ready to join the, the uh, ranks of the GPAC conference. I was uh, remembering an occasion many years ago. I had an opportunity to hear one of Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, closest advisors and teachers speak. And uh, he said something that I have never forgotten, and that is this, low aim not failure is sin. Uh, I think this speaks loudly to why we are making this move. Uh, we want always to strive to be the best that we can be. We're not afraid to risk being put in a difficult situation. We're not afraid to risk being an underdog. We're going to work to be the best that we can be. And we believe that the GPAC offers that avenue for the University of Jamestown. And I'm really excited to think about a future uh, playing with a group of schools that we are a wonderful fit into this conference. If you know these schools, you know that we share a lot, both in values, in size, in the way in which we operate our institutions, the loyalty of our alumni, the support from our fans, those are all common elements within the GPAC that Jamestown can endorse and feel very comfortable with. So it is really uh, an exciting moment in the life of the University of Jamestown. Uh, change is something that we look forward to. And this change in particular is going to bring many rewards for future student athletes wearing the gym uniform in the years to come. And we uh, really are glad that you could be with us today to hear this exciting news. And we look forward to taking the next step as we prepare to move into the GPAC as a, both an, an affiliate and a full member. So thank you again, Corey. Wow, we did that good of a job. There's no questions from the background. <clears throat>
I guess just one of the main things is is you know a non-conference schedule. Are you still going to play some of the NAIA schools in state here in North Dakota with Valley City, Mayville State, Dickinson State, schools that have been traditional rivals over the years for you guys? Absolutely, that's our goal. You know, one of the important things in this process was not to lose our traditional rivals here in the state of North Dakota with Mayville, Mayville State, Valley City State, and Dickinson State. I mean, they certainly know, you know, the, the process we've been going through. They've been very aware for the last six months uh, about what we were what we were attempting to do. I should say probably the last three months. And so I've had opportunities to talk to all the athletic directors of those schools, and it's our intent to keep competing with them in the non-conference schedule. Uh, but certainly that's their decision, you know. Uh, I don't want to speak for those institutions, but it is our hope that we will continue to play those rivalries because they're really important uh, to our student athletes, to our coaches, uh, to our fans, and, and our supporters. So that, that's our hope is that we can continue those rivalries. Has it been a tough sell to them? I mean, I mean, I've talked to you a lot about this, but has it, has it been hard to sell this to alumni? No, I don't think so, you know. Certainly, you're never going to get everybody to agree, especially when you're making a big change like this. But I don't think it has been a tough sell. I think if you look at the facts, the, the analogy that I like to give is that we're getting to compete in the Big Ten of the NEI. And what that means is both academically and athletically, this is one of the best leagues in the entire country at the NEI level. And the great thing about it is we get to stay NEI. We don't have to leave our division. We get to stay where we're at. And we get to compete in one of the best leagues in the country. So again, there certainly have been some concerns. People have expressed those concerns, but I would not say it was a tough sell. Maybe to Corey, I mean, in terms of growth and expansion, you know, that's kind of like you're talking about, that's kind of the, the buzzword in this game now. I mean, do you expect or hope, or would that be somewhere at some point to grow further? Well, I think you have to continue to look at it that way. I think that's a great question. And um, you know, we've been pretty deliberate uh, in our growth of the GPAC. I think if you heard my words earlier, we went a period of uh, about 2003, four all the way to 2015 with no additional membership. And that's because of our commitment to the right membership um, in the GPAC. So um, certainly I think in the last few years, there's been more urgency uh, on that front uh, because it is changing. Uh, the NAIA uh, went through a period of losing some members and now they're back on the upswing on the other side of the mountain. And we wanna be contributing to keeping people in the NAIA and as I mentioned keeping strong conferences together because at the heart of it all under a direct qualification model it's not just an athletic decision but let's face it that's a big part of it is that you need to have strong conference uh, play you get you scheduling any coach in this room will tell you how daunting scheduling is it doesn't matter the sport if you have an easy schedule then your life is pretty good it's in the prior scheduling goes but I don't think any coach really has that so I think when you look at your conference schools, that's a big part of what you do. Well, we talk about it all the time. How are we gonna play our conference schedules? Double round robin, single round robin, unbalanced, uh, how many meets, how many days for golf? All those things are so paramount to what you do in a conference because that's how you get through an academic year from fall, winter to spring. So uh, we, we have focused to that just as a, an example. In baseball, we always did double headers, played everybody in double header. It wasn't enough. We, were, we, we needed more. We needed more games to avoid more travel. So we went to, we're going to a 28 game schedule this year. So that's an example there of, of where you look at an issue, you look at a problem and you address it. So um, that's why it, it, down the road, absolutely, we're, we're open, we're open. Uh, you have to be, uh, again, I talked about if you're not moving, you're gonna get, you're gonna get stuck. So um, I think that's so key, and our presidents get that, our athletic directors get that, our faculty athletic representatives get that, and we'll continue to work in that way. Uh, was there any you know, hesit hesitancy relative to the GPAC? You know, because you have a pretty cozy geographical area there to, you know, they talk a lot about the footprint. Was, was there any reluctance from your president, from your schools to come this far north? There's no question it was talked about. Um, for the same reasons I'm sure up here it was talked about on, on the other side. You have to talk about that. But I think uh, the realization set in very quickly that we were pretty fortunate to probably have, if I can use your word, that cozy of a membership. Because if you look at what I call a bat map of any other NAIA conference where you take the furthest points and you spread the wings out, you know, the GPAC and maybe the Chicagoland Conference are the two that are about that big and have been fortunate to stay that, that tight. Everybody else got pretty big bat wings when you start looking um, at, at a map. And 
you know, at some point uh, you have to be able to leave your comfort zone. And uh, that was, you know, this is the first time we're going out of three states. This is the fourth state now, North Dakota. Um, but it was important and absolutely the right decision. So I don't know hesitancy was the word, just due deliberation, I think would, would be a way I would look at it. And I think we did a great job of addressing it uh, through, through the scheduling models and try to ease some of those concerns. And can I ask you, you know, sports wise, what, what was the what was the vote, uh, the, the tally? Can I ask you that? We we're not releasing the tally. We're just going to tell you that the threshold was met within the Constitution and bylaws of the GPAC, and uh, that it was met uh, w without issue, and uh, the membership was approved. You know that initial conversation that was mentioned when you were talking about like, on the phone, like, oh, we were just thinking of EQ. What was it about Jamestown then that you know sort of sparked that idea? Sure. Uh, you look, you look at a map and you start to look at what we maybe have been looking at as a certain zone and we, you start to look out of that zone a little bit and then you play some scenarios in your mind, the what ifs, what could it look like and some of the things when Sean reached out to me, I had been thinking about some of those things, you know, we, we can be creative and that's why I said maybe Jamestown isn't as daunting of an idea as maybe initially it was at one point when we had talked earlier. I've known Dr. Vidal for years. I mean, this is not our first conversation. Uh, I think we've had two other occasions where we've at least nibbled at the edges of talking about this. But the timing was right this time. Um, I think an important piece to note in that, it goes back to something I talked about earlier, non-conference scheduling is so challenging right now, especially when you look at Eastern Iowa. Um, we have a conference that has expanded into Eastern Iowa, and they're a large enough conference that they take up a lot of games in and of themselves. That's great for them. That was bad for our middle of our conference because those were non-conference games that we had year in and year out in varying sports that just simply aren't there anymore. So then you have to start to look at expanding out your map a little bit, and that's really where Jamestown came into play and said, you know, this is, this is doable, and that's why we looked at it that way. In terms of scheduling, you know, where are you at in that process? I mean, I don't want to get too specific, but, you know, what do we look, I mean, are, you know, are there going to be lots of weekend games or meet in the middle, or, or what are some of the options? I know this is kind of putting the card before the no, horse here. No, no, there's been a, believe me, probably the biggest issue we've been working on, myself, our coaching staff, the coaching staff, the GPAC, the athletic directors, and everybody else has been scheduling, because the number one thing is student-athlete experience. Okay, that's the most important thing. It's not... It's not the athletic director experience, it's the student athlete experience. We wanted to make sure, first of all, that we miss as less, as the minimal amount of class time as possible. And we've studied this, and I work with all of our coaches, and we'll actually miss less class time or the same amount of class time two years from now as we will this year as a department. Now, we're having to do some things uh, scheduling wise that make it work for us. A lot of it's going to be we're going to be playing at home during the week. We have to take those longer trips to Nebraska. We won't be doing that on a Wednesday. We'll be doing that on a Saturday where we can stay in class hopefully till about noon on Friday and then start making our way. So looking at when well, we're on break, uh, Christmas break, New Year's break, we fit some of our longer trips in there. So again, we're not missing class time. That was really for our coaches, uh, for myself, for our president. Certainly that was the number one thing at the top of the list was we've got to make sure that our student athletes travel the right way, and make sure we do it in a way where we're not missing class time. And we're not 100% there on every schedule, but we basically started this process in June. And the reason I remember that is because I was on vacation working on that. My wife didn't leave me or anything, but uh, that's when it started, and we're still working on it today. And the great thing is, is we've still got, you know, another probably six months to really nail it down. You know, we're not jumping into the league next year. We're jumping into the league for the 18-19 season. So, that, that's really gives us even more time to really chip away at it, make sure that we have thought of all the issues for not only us, but for all the schools in GPAC and how we deal with that and how we come up with the best conclusion. Anything else? Well, again, I just want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank uh, Tina Lawrence and her staff for setting all this up, and uh, it's a great day to meet Jimmy. Thanks.